the word of god is alive and powerful sharper than any two edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart all scripture is god breathed and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of god might be mature thoroughly furnished unto all good works study to show thyself approved unto god a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth or accurately handling the word of truth before we could continue today's discourse it is very much essential that a believer ought to know that he has been eternally secured and is been saved at the moment of salvation by faith alone in christ alone any other prejudiced thoughts raised by the so called theologians or the believers who think by reading the bible themselves they can understand or in fact even the theologians who do not have a proper understanding of the greek can come back and tell not only when in the perfect tense or in the aorist tense which exactly the bible tells in acts 16:31 once if you believe for a lifetime you have been saved at the same time you once believe and it's a continuous process once you have done the action in the perfect tense and it goes on forever therefore dear brethren do not fall into the prejudiced minds of these people for them the vocabulary or the terms what we have been using may be very much technical or he may call live this nonsense to the theologians but what for me i need to secure my salvation that is what they may think the problem with those minds of those people driven by satan is absolutely to tell to the reality of the word that they are not at all in alignment in the word that they are not at all in truth and they are really not able to come out of the first stage of salvation which tells to us constantly the process of salvation which has to go throughout into the reality of bible bible doctrine because when you have been saved you have next thing to live a life in this time that is phase 2 the believers life in this time in this phase 2 of believers life in this time particularly in this unique dispensation of the church age sandwiched between the two advance of our lord we have been given and we have been termed out as alike nicetesis new spiritual species unto christ we have to know and to look and to understand and rightly divide the word of truth as per the subject of dispensations because without the dispensing technique it is highly possible for us to rightly divide the word of truth and without the dispensing technique you cannot differentiate between the church and the israel you cannot differentiate between the millennium rule tribulation followed in the followed by the church rapture therefore you are very much aware of the fact that you need to know dispensations without knowing dispensations you cannot come you cannot learn you cannot understand what exactly is the reality of the word and what is the importance that we need to give for being termed out as alike nicetesis new spiritual species unto christ therefore in order to make sure that you have been controlled of the spirit in this alakeni ketesis with the polytheism of privileges it is essential that you use the privacy of your priesthood every believer in this church age have been made as a priest a royal priest and a holy priesthood why because you cannot stay long in a dislocated joints you cannot be in a process of dislocated saints but rather you need to turn back and come to the transfigured saints or transformation saints and this process demands that you need to be in fellowship when once you believe in the lord and savior jesus christ your salvation has been absolutely secured and how you are going to construct your house depending upon your work you will be judged but you will never lose your salvation but the people want to come and tell that they will lose their salvation they will not receive any reward they are not capable of understanding this simple truth which the bible tells for us once you have been believed and we shall look today as the grace of our lord leads us to look what is this doctrine of eternal security already we have been covered in one of our tapes but this doctrine of eternal security have to be made for you once again to be explained with the references so that you could come out of the prejudiced mind it is very much essential dear brethren every believer have been given this great privilege of all time that to know and to believe to know and to believe to know and to believe believe means pistio in the greek believe means to express a uh, approach to the lord that you don't have any other thing apart from his word therefore this doctrine of eternal security is of very much essential in today's christendom because many of the people if they don't come along to realize that they have been saved at the moment of salvation by faith alone in christ alone and it is not by works it is not by baptism that you could be saved or it is not like the roman catholicism doctrine which tells to you that at the end of your journey looking upon your attitude looking upon your behavior looking upon xyz trends we shall design and 
assign you that you are a pastor and we shall design and assign you that you can be the Pope and you can be a saint. What is saint? The Greek word is hagiasmos, which meant to say sanctification, kept apart purely. That the moment of salvation, the positional approach itself, the positional truth is you are called as a saint. You are being really made pure and holy in the sight of Jehovah. It is no longer for you a lifetime process of works that you need to be called as a saint. And the people should recognize you that you are a saint. No, you are being set apart. And that is what many of the people fail to understand. You are being absolutely set apart to the praise of His glory and His grace. Before the foundation of the world, when you believe in the Lord, in love, He predestined you so that you could be holy and blameless. But what is happening today? You are not even worried that you have been called as a saint. You may ask the difference between the disciples and the saints. Saints could be one form of a discipleship who gave their lives to set apart and to follow our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and to learn the teachings of Christ that were the disciples. Now you can tell the sainthood is nothing but the continuation of the discipleship. But now, in positional truth, the retroactive positional truth, we look forward to the cross, but they look backward to the cross. Exactly what happens is, now you have believed at a moment of salvation, that's it, there ends the matter, there is nothing you can think, you can add, you can claim, or you can tell that I am not being saved, I cannot be called as a saint. No, you are expression of your evolution. Though you deny the Lord in experiential process, and you say you no longer believe upon on him, but God remains faithful because he is immutable. He will never change. That is his essence. God is not a man to change his mind. God is not a man to lie. Dear brethren, why we are emphasizing for you your doctrine of eternal security? Because you have a life after salvation. In the phase two, you have a great life that you have to live. This great life, which includes for you the spiritual self-esteem, followed by spiritual autonomy, and then by spiritual maturity, so that you can reach the status of maximum glorification unto Christ. And that's the great reason why you have been kept alive. And Satan obscures you to know this truth. This truth that you have been saved. And what are you? You are in Christ a saint. And you doesn't want to know the simple truths, nor you want to believe what the Bible tells. Then you want to believe what the world will tell. That is what listening to the lies. And Revelation 22, 14 and 15 tells to us, the one who are unbelieving will never enter. They are being prepared for the second death. Unbelieving. Whatsoever is not of faith is what? Sin. Says Romans 2, 14. And why are you not able to understand the simple truth? You need to go by faith because God is not a man to lie because he is immutable. He will never change. He is the same. And he is the truth. He is the veracity. When God himself has told that you have been eternally saved, then what it is that is hindering you to believe that you have been saved? And what exactly is the process that is happening around in our churches today to teach? They are teaching them to tell about doctrine of eternal security into the terms of their own penance, into the terms of their own guilt consciousness, into the terms that they are not capable of understanding to rebound and get back into fellowship so that the restoration of fellowship which could be taken care, the one of the absolutes of the 40th one which is irrevocable, because when you sin you lose it, but by taking the responsibility of it by 1 John 1 9 you can regain it back. That's what we can find in the doctrine of 39 irrevocable absolutes and one revocable absolute. That revocable absolute is nothing but the filling ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit or the controlling power ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit at the moment of salvation. The believer has been filled as per Galatians 3 3. And the filling of Lord God the Holy Spirit received at salvation could be revoked when the believer sins. That is what breaking up the fellowship. You sin either by thought, word, or deed. That's why we have been mandated constantly to be mindful not to grieve Lord God the Holy Spirit, not to squelch Lord God the Holy Spirit, not to lie to the ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. Therefore, whenever you sin either by your thought, word, or deed, you are going to lose this fellowship. And how you get back the fellowship? You are recovered when you use rebound 1 John 1 9. Why it is so much essential? Because it is your life. And whenever we start our discourse earlier, it is very much essential for us to know what are we in Christ so that you can be absolutely prepared to attain the privileges given to you and you can get back into the fellowship because you have a goal, a goal even where the angels will come and learn from you the manifold wisdom of God. And if you are a dislocated saint, you cannot come back. You need to change, metamorphomai, a day-by-day -day process of intake in Bible doctrine, a day-by-day -day work that you need to take care of, and that is what you have been called as a transfigured saint. 
You cannot play around over here with your crusader arrogance, with your old sin nature pattern, followed in Colossians 2, 16 through 21, and you can say that I'm going to do great things to the Lord. No, wait, no chance at all. Your penance, your guilt consciousness, your attitude towards Christ is what absolutely being trained by satanic mind to tell that you are not being saved. And that's a lie. Exact lie which Satan induced into the mind of Eve. Who said you're going to die? You will be like God. Exactly the same pattern what the people are believing today in the churches. Exactly the same pattern what the Christendom has been raised to havoc. You are not being saved by just believing in Christ. Who said you are going to be saved? You need to follow some parents. You need to follow some process. You need to follow some XYZ trends. Trend towards lusciousness. Trend towards licentious. Our Christian moral degeneracy, self-righteousness. Our Christian immoral degeneracy, self-indulgence. Mark 7, 12, 21 to 23. And these are the people with Christian immoral degeneracy can never inherit what is inheritance. You cannot have your property. But you will not lose your salvation. That is what the Bible import really imparts to us, the importance. And some morons will come and tell, how is it, Lord? Okay, I will meet at the end of the day and I will go, go on sinning. But wait a second, you are going to lose your eternal rewards, both in time as well as in eternity. These eternal rewards can be compared for you for your spiritual wealth. If you can compare that wealth to your monetary value of this world, at present you may be a middle class or lower class or BPL below poverty line people. After your hard work and good luck, after a few years you may come to the point of upper class. When your basic needs have been met, when you have done really the things that are essential for you to be done. And then later on, what happens? At the end of the day, you need to die. So the people will record you, telling to the point, he was a man of a BPL. And later on, he became a rich man. That's what you can tell. But once you enter into eternity with Christ after believing him, and if you don't put your wealth right now here in this earth, that is what the phase two, believer's life in time. And where the people do not come to understand the believer's life in time, they want to still battle around in the phase one itself. There will be zero, zero, point zero, zero. And some of the believers after salvation who want to waste their life in useless and worthless speculations, they are also zero, zero, point zero, zero with endless genealogies. And we have a great description of them in First Timothy 1 and following what we note in the same first chapter. And never they might have heard in their lifetime what is the term of dispensations at all. And why is it they have been doing it? Purely because they have rejected the truth. The truth to be inculcated. Because Satan has induced their minds not to tell the importance that they have been saved. And then now they need to look upon the second stage, that is the phase two. And many of the people battle around in phase one itself, dear brethren. This battling of phase one will lead them into error. This battling of failed phase one will cause them to be absolutely degenerated. A declension and really leading the people into apostasy by rejecting Bible doctrine to be taught. A teaching pastor who is no longer a teaching pastor will follow the trends of emotionalism pattern. And he wants to tell the people, see, you take baptism, you will be saved. Okay, you follow some good works, you will be saved. At the end of the day, we need to scan you, and if you are not eligible for that scanning, then you are not saved, you are lost to hell. What a hell word of it is that they are going to tell, that the blaspheming of my Christ word, when once you have been believing, you have been saved, said the Bible, believe in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved. They want to add something of the process. A process of saving. They don't believe that they are saints. They don't believe that they have been believed, that they have been saved. Satan wants to induce the mind of these people with darkness. With the words telling that you are not being saved. Because when they are not out of the salvation process, they cannot come to the phase two. And you may, give, you may go and tell, now I am saved and I will do no works. And I will no learn doctrine. That is what after learning doctrine, you need to have that works. And you may say, I will be happy, and I will come and meet you in the heaven. No problem, but you can come and meet, but without any rewards. You cannot inherit. That is what a Christian immoral degeneracy is. You cannot inherit the kingdom of God. That meant to say, you cannot enter. That meant to say, no, but you can enter, but no of your own value, own property, zero, zero, point zero, zero to show forth. 
That is what exactly the word of the Lord tells to us. Every believer has been given equal privilege and equal opportunity to build great mansions, great kingdoms for God. How much of your capital you have, that much upon you can do your business. If you don't have any capital, you cannot do any business to the Lord. And Lord has given for each and every one the great mind wealth that is nothing but the Bible, the Bible, the Logos. The Logos, which is the only communicating link between God and man, the Bible, the completed canon of scripture, what we have. This is the only footing where we can stand and we can have a free course of addressing with Lord. But what is happening today in our pulpits? They don't want to ask anything from the Bible doctrine. They want to have some things where they can tell it is absolutely great. And they want to tell they are doing great works to Jehovah. It's no way possible, dear brother, and we are not dealing with the dead gods, neither we are dealing with the things pertaining to emotional pattern we are dealing unto Christ we are dealing unto Jehovah we are dealing at the great law the true living jealousy one he cannot compromise with your blasphemous belief he cannot compromise with your trans telling to the Lord that Lord you are not immutable Lord you are not veracity the very words of the Lord have been doubted today in the pulpits by the pastors far as the believers can doubt or not Pastors don't believe the truth because of the fear of the softness of this world. Because they want to induce some fear in the mind of the believers, telling that he will not live a pious life, he will not live a good life. Who the hell cares? If you love the Lord, keep his commandments. And his commandments tells to you to live in the Spirit. And when the Spirit has been lived in you, you need to look upon what exactly the Word of the Lord teaches to you through the Spirit so that you can in return align yourself to the heavenly calling. Not to this earthly calling, you are not of this earth. You are in pilgrimage tour. This earth is temporary for you, and you have something that is heavenly, 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 and your citizenship is in heaven, not on this earth. And that's what the polytheism of privileges teach to us. Being induced by Satan, many of the people never believe that they have been eternally saved. And you know how much they are losing. Every day they are losing a maximum amount of capital wherewith Lord wants to do with them a great business, a great business of Bible doctrine. So that they can increase their capacity, so that they can become like Christ. And they can know to this world a living world, a living truth, a manifestation of true witnesses unto Jehovah. Witnesses by life, witnesses by everything, the holy manner walk, and witnessing by word, when he opens the word from his mouth, he really seasons it with salt, that is what with doctrine, and he really seasons out with love and grace. Where the angels now will learn from you the love of God, the grace of God, the humility of God, and even the transformation of God becoming God-man, this is what our Lord has done for us. It was just a moment for him to go to the cross. It was just a moment for him not to go to the cross, but to create the universe. But how much painful process it was for him to go to the cross, making himself metamorphosized, metamorphisms into the reality of becoming God to God-man. And what is happening today in our pulpits? Not able to understand the reality of the word, that is what it is happening. Not able to come back and understand the truth, that is what it is happening. Because they are not able to get out from the first stage, which is nothing but a period of salvation. They want to still speculate, how I have been saved, how I have been saved, if I have been saved, how is the proof, what is the proof? Belief is the proof, faith is the proof. Faith alone in Christ alone, sozo, in the perfect tense of the Greek, which meant to say for us that you are saved in the past with the result that you go on to be saved forever. So now what? After salvation, that's what the question should come. Therefore, Satan doubts your mind to tell, or not at all being salva salvation or saved, then how are you are going to think after salvation? What? That's what the process is going wrong in the pulpits. As Satan leads them to think, corrupt their imagination. You know how weird is this mind? It thinks what at all it wants to think. 
some man can create in the entertainment media some aliens. Some can create a man with an iron mask. They have a great imagination to be really appreciated of. Thinking that the day the earth stood still, aliens versus predators, all this entertainment media knew very well the things which they are thinking they can know very well how to divide, how to tell, how to exactly look. In their vain imaginations, what they're taking, if they are taking some time under the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to imagine what is the Bible doctrine, what is the truth, we would have had better orientation to Bible doctrine and to the fear of Jehovah. But they don't want. They think it is a religion. No, it is your life. It is a relationship. Without having this relationship with Jehovah through His Son, only begotten one, you don't have life. Your attitude towards our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ determines your eternal future. And if your attitude is not proper, you are gone, you are out. And that is what the Word of the Lord tells to us. You may think God may be a liar for you to tell lies. No. God is not a liar. Nor is a man to change his words. He is immutable and veracity. Satan thought this could be the basis in the angelic conflict. It can rise to doubt the essence of God. And Satan realized what is the result of this angelic conflict. The result of this angelic conflict being for them to, made, to, be, known, to be known and to be noted. The result of this angelic conflict is what they need to note. The creation of man judging the angels. When you still doubt that you have not come out with your salvation, how will you grow up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine? When you grow up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, then only you can teach your angels that have been constantly observing you. You don't think you are alone. You have constantly angels surrounded by you. And if you doubt that fact, in First Kings we know when Elisha told, Lord, open his eyes so that he can look the chariots of fire. That's not the Bible evidence even in the Old Testament. Several times by the prophet's visions that they have seen angels constantly and they have been telling, Holy One, Holy One, Holy One, Holy One. In fact, even if you doubt in the book of Revelation, do you not know that thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon angels bow down upon before the Lord? And why do you want to waste your time on this earth? After salvation, what is the question that you should come to your brain? After salvation, what is the process that you need to come and take to your brain? After salvation, the simplified answer is learn Bible doctrine, get acquainted with yourself to Christ, and make to become a winner believer in Christ. Learn the three spiritual adult stages of this love, and which tells for us the spiritual self-esteem followed by spiritual autonomy and then by spiritual maturity. You need to follow these things absolutely clear. You cannot waste your time. You cannot look your time. You cannot think considering that you can do great things to the Lord without having this knowledge of Christ. No way. No chance at all. A winner believer why you have been given so that you can exemplify your position has been positionally superior than to the chief fallen angel known as Satan. And therefore Satan never wants you to enjoy that experiential sanctification which is a process of day by day process which remains a day by day intake of Bible doctrine. That's why what does Satan do? It induces in your mind the doubt, doubt about doctrine of eternal security. A great doubt, a great doubt in your mind. And this doctrine of eternal security, point number one, tells the positional approach. Every believer is in union with Christ. Romans 8, 1, Ephesians 1, 3 to 6, Jude 1. A logical approach. If God did the most for us when we were his enemies, then it follows he will do much more for us as members of the royal family of God. Romans 5, to 10, 5, Romans 5 9 to 10, Romans 5, 15, 17, 20, and Romans 8, 32. And you have an anthropomorphic approach. The believer is held in God's hand and he will never let go. Psalms 37, 24, John 10, 28. An experiential approach. Though we may say we no longer believe God remains faithful because he is immutable and veracity. 2 Timothy 2, 12 to 13. The family approach. We are being born into the royal family of God and can never be removed. John 1, 12, Galatians 3, 26. The body approach. The head of the body. Christ can never say to any member of the body, a believer, that he does not need him. 1 Corinthians 12, 21, Colossians 1, 18. Inheritance approach. We have, an inheritance of, we have an inheritance which is incorruptible and unchanging, waiting for us in heaven. Ephesians 1, 11, 1 Peter 1, 4 and 5. 
we have a Greek tense approach. The aorist tense of pistio in Acts 16.31 means to believe for all time the perfect tense of sozo in Ephesians 2, 8, and 9 means that you are saved in the past with the result that you go on being saved forever. And we do have the sovereignty approach as well. God's decision to keep us, 2 Peter 3, 9, Jude 24. And the sealing ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, I guarantee that the name of every believer remains in the book of life forever. 2 Corinthians 1, 22, Ephesians 1, 30, Ephesians 4, 30, 2 Timothy 2, 19, in comparison with Revelation 20, 13, 15. And why aren't we able to understand the simple truth? Because you don't believe. Because you don't understand, because you're not in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. That's why you don't, you are not being enlightened in these things. And that is what it is happening today in our pulpits. No proper belief, no proper faith, no proper realization in Bible doctrine. In fact, even they doubt what is their salvation, what is the process of salvation. They don't go by belief, which says, believe in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved. But they want to say, what belief, which belief, what belief? Without baptism, is it possible? Without our works, is it possible? Do you think the baptism of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you are going to get it back to be filled? The plural verb, the passive voice, it says in the Greek, it is not you going to do the work. It is not that the Holy Spirit is going to fill you, control you. Exactly the process of saving is also the same method. It is what Lord God, the Holy Spirit creates in you an activated human spirit so that now you can listen to the doctrine. And this activation of the human spirit which Lord God, the Holy Spirit acts, that is what you need to understand to believe in the Lord. You cannot work out. It is the thinking of Christ which really changes you. Without the thinking of Christ, it is highly impossible for, his, for you to have the true fellowship with Jehovah. And many of the people will come to tell that we are doing this, we will be doing that, we are great enough to do this and do that. No way, no chance at all. By faith alone, in Christ alone, salvation is being really given to each and every individual in this world, in their privacy of their soul, when they take the decision to believe upon the Lord, when they hear the truth of the gospel. And that is what the Bible doctrine teaches to us. You need to just believe. And the one who is representing, you have a work of an ambassadorship as a royal priest, and you have a work towards the Lord, to grow up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine to the perfection of His grace, so that you can be perfectly mature and thoroughly mature into all good works you have been furnished, so that you can know the reality of the Word and come back and really realize the importance of the truth. But what is happening today in day by day process? No reality in the Word. They are just throwing off the things which are not necessary. They are just keeping a holding upon those things which they make, which is no necessary at all for them for salvation. When the Bible tells by faith alone in Christ alone, you need to go by faith, no works. But they, hold, they want to hold their hands upon the works. That's why they don't doubt upon the reality of cunning nature of Satan what the satan is doing what capability of satan is leading them they don't want to look they are just happy to look and to consider the stupidified thoughts of their brain their vain imaginations they can imagine greater things with their entertainment media but can't even they imagine the reality of the word when they believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because they don't have the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit because they are constantly grieving, squelching and lying. You may say why and how? Because he is God. He permanently indwells in you. He knows even your deepest thought. Even your word. What is your motivation behind your thought? And whenever you think of that, you are being grieving. That is what the thought meant to say. Even the slightest provocation with your thought, God the Holy Spirit will be absolutely grieved. Your word and action is still greater evidences. Well, what evidences they are. But your inner, inner evidences as well. Even your inner thoughts, if you ever sin by making some of the things which are not necessary for Christ, which is quite contrary, and if you are just suppressing your flesh, so that you want to rule in your flesh by suppressing Lord God, the Holy Spirit, even in that thought you are been sinning against Jehovah. That's why the privacy of the priesthood is so much essential, because you need not break your fellowship with Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And without the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, it is no way possible for you to understand the reality of the Word. 
and the greater the failure for us to understand the reality of the world, greater will be a life that we are living that is no worth at all in the sight of Jehovah. And therefore, dear brethren, we have been mandated constantly, permanently, all the time to be controlled of the Spirit, to be filled of the Spirit, to live in the Spirit, to walk in the Spirit. So that you and I can know and realize what are the importance of the truth ministry of Lord God Almighty. And greater our failure to know the simple truths, we will just wind up upon those stupefied things in this world that you have not been saved and you will not reach a life that which really Lord has designed for us in eternity past. Dear brethren, it is your life. After believing in Christ, it is your face too on this earth. Every believer has a unique spiritual life given by God. Every believer has to maintain the same rule, said Philippians 3, 12 through 21. The same rule which Lord has revealed to Apostle Paul. The same rule to reach the maximum glorification of Christ. And greater our failure to understand the same rule, greater will be our failure not to realize the truth in Christ. Where are we? What are we? How are we? Therefore, dear brethren, ponder over these things. Once again, cross-check with the truth of Bible doctrine. Know the reality of your word and come back and look as we continue in the polity of privileges of this subject. You are eternally saved. Your life is much more required than all the stupefied thoughts of these people. The world is temporary. We are not going to stay over here because we are temporary on this earth. We have something to be deposited in heaven. The divine capital, Bible doctrine. Not only just deposit for your account and you need to teach the angels what is the reality of the manifold wisdom of God and you need to tell the Satan you are wrong because we know the truth and the truth has set us free. So dear brethren, ponder over these things. Get out from the traps of Satan, clear your cobwebs in your thinking, and get back to the reality of the word by faith alone, in Christ alone. Believe you have been saved, and profoundly you need to ask the question after salvation what? We are having the great astonishing truths, the truths in the Bible doctrine which tells you have been saved. And these truths, in this keeping, keeping your mind in this great astounding truths, you need to ask your question after salvation what? So we shall continue in the next step. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life, in order to be telling to Lord God the Father that they believe upon Christ. That is the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for you for very simple. Believing Christ in the privacy of your soul, you tell to Lord God the Father that you believe upon His Son. That is the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. And whereas for the believers, the great mandate is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, so that you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And whereas for the pastor teacher, the great mandate is to Caruso Thon Lagan, herald the word in season out of season, because for the diameter of my witnesses. The number one diameter of my witnesses is indwelling Trinity. Number two diameter of my witnesses, Bible in our hand. And number three, the diameter of my witnesses will be our hearers. And if there are no hearers, dear brother, do not worry. Besides nature, the entire angelic coast will be our witnesses. But what is our duty? Our duty is to be not like those dogs mentioned in Revelation 22, nor 3 2 of Philippians. But we need to be faithful stewards. We need to be the bondmen of Christ. We need to be the faithful laborers of our Lord like an unprofitable slaves. Our duty is that which we have to do. And our duty, if it's been not done properly, we need to ask forgiveness to the Lord to tell, Father, if you have been here, you would have done greater things. Because you have been born in the out of sin nature. But we have been born in the sin nature to realize the truth, to come back to the reality of the maturity of the word. We might have taken some time losing the time which could have been led to your will, to your perfection. That is what you might have failed. But Lord, you have everything in your hands. You are done better work than us. Kindly lead us in thy truth. That should be a prayer as a pastor teacher. And if there are no witnesses for you to hear your tapes, do not worry. Besides nature, the entire angelic host will be our witnesses. But what is the ultima? The ultima is Bible doctrine. Bible doctrine and Bible doctrine. So which way you want to go, you decide. We shall continue in the next step. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that was given to fellowship with you through the word. We pray that, Lord God, the Holy Spirit will enlighten us in these things and make it a source of blessing and challenge, sovereign Lord. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen. Thank you.